we're going to talk about the heart of stone again. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. You can never get enough of this because things happen in life. You know, if you think you're healed of one thing, as we go along, something else goes on. And if we don't know how to deal with it, we get stuck. And that's not what we want to do. We want, God has given us all the tools. So with the heart of stone, I have a heart of stone. I went to the doctors just to get a checkup. And the good news was I lost a pound. I said, yay, okay. <laughs> then I got measured. And I shrunk a half inch. So I'm going to need this thing down here. So the pound I lost was the inch. So there. So I was like, oh, come on, God. You know, I had an expression on my face. And, and the nurse looked at me and said, what's the matter? And I went, are you kidding me? I shrunk a half inch. She goes, yeah. She goes, but, but that's not much. And I said to her, but I was six foot. No, I said, so I said, so, so, you know, but I was like, oh, man. But anyway, so going on with that. It's a little humor, but I was not happy about it. So, okay, Reyes, we can go. Let's just open up in prayer. I'm sorry. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight, and we thank you for the word that's going to come forth. A Holy Spirit, you are welcome here tonight, and I ask you that every heart is open to receive your word and to deal with whatever we need to deal with. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you give us the tools to move forward and you give us the tools for healing. We thank you, Jesus, for this, and we love you in the name of Jesus. So the first slide we have is the heart of stone. So if you see the, the heart of stone, what I did was I only picked a few. There's several. You know, there's unforgiveness. You have abandonment. You have betrayal. You have rejection. You have bitterness. So when things happen to us, what happens is it goes in our hearts because we're human. And I don't know if people remember this, but Jesus was human on earth. He was a man. He was not Holy Spirit Jesus. Because many people, when you speak to Christians about this, they think he was Jesus, that he was, he, he was man first. Then he went. Anyway, so with that, all these things go on in our heart. And if we don't deal with them, they get stuck there. And, and all the bumps and all those things are there and it's in our heart. And then we're wondering why we act the way we do. Why we're crying out of a drop of a stone. Why if somebody didn't say hello to you, you're offended. Why all these things are happening. So that's one picture of and like I said there's a lot of other things I just put a few up there just so you can get the idea of what I'm trying to say so I'm going to read I read this the last time hardness of heart in the Bible is a heart that is like a stone that is unmoved unfeeling unresponsive sometimes to human suffering but worst of all unmoved unresponsive unfeeling towards God's word and God's mercies, God's gospel. So what happens when we get hurt? Most of the times we blame God. Why did you do that? Why did you let that happen? What happened? Why, why is that going on? I have learned through my life before anything, I have to know what's my part in it. We have a part in it. We have a part in what goes on in our lives. And don't kid yourself if you don't think you do. You do. And that's where I you go back to the word. I learned to go back to the word and go, okay, what did you say here? What did you say here? Because that's the only way I got healed. And I know it's not just for me. It's for everybody. I like this saying. Denzel Washington wrote it. I'm quoting him. If you don't heal from what you hurt, you will bleed on people who you didn't who didn't cut you. Say so if you don't heal from what you hurt what hurt you, you will bleed on people who didn't cut you. So if something happens to you in a family, whatever it may be, if you think you're the only one that gets affected, you're wrong. Because when something happens in a family, it, everybody gets affected. Everybody, everybody's the drug addict. Everybody's the alcoholic. Every, you know, not to the extent of the drinking and the drugs, but they're suffering along with you, and you think it's only you. But you go through it. But yet we will turn around and we will 
blame our family. Well, you didn't, you didn't, and maybe they didn't, but you need to get to your own healing of, of what's happening. But I thought that quote was really very powerful. So in Ezekiel 36, 27, this is a beautiful statement of the new covenant that Jesus fulfills when he sheds his blood for sinners. Now, how many times, I know I have done it, how many times have you seen people who are well-dressed, very nice, everything's intact, everything's good, and you go, wow, they got it together. And then something happens. And when something happens, you see their true character inside. They can't handle it. They, they flip out. They, you know, that's not normal. Now, understand something. When you go through a tragedy, when you go through something, of course you're going to be upset. But when you go from a 1 to a 10, something's wrong. That You shouldn't be going from a 1 to a 10. There's something within you that's bringing you all the way up here. Even though the event that went on did happen, so we're not going to ignore that. But yet, what is our character? So again, we go back to our heart. So Ezekiel says... I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh that is tender heart that can feel, can be touched. And I will put out my spirit, my spirit within you and cause you to walk in the statues and be careful to obey my rules. So with everything, if you don't obey and you don't do the right thing, whether you do good or whether you do bad, there's consequences to everything we do. So don't kid yourself and think that nothing is going to happen. And in my experience, sometimes when things do happen, the effect of it doesn't happen right away. It may happen way down there. It will come back and bite you if you're doing something that is not right. It always does. I haven't seen it not happen. It always does. So... When I hit her. Why would this hinder? Will, would this hinder, hinder you in prayer? So if we go to the next slide, um, here's the blockage. So on the bottom is prayer. So here we are praying to God, pouring out our hearts. But yet, again, I'm only using these just to give you an example. Unforgiveness, abandonment, rejection, and betrayal is all here. On top of it is God. So do you see everything that is blocking your prayer from going to God? Because of the fact is, not that God can't hear us. He can hear us certainly. But okay, so you're praying and you have unforgiveness and God is going to you. You need to forgive Susie Jane for whatever, but you can't hear him. Because you got all this blockage here. And then we'll go... He didn't answer us. He's not answering me. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. But these blockages are real. They're real. What we have here, it's all baggage that goes with us. So when we're praying, of course, and I believe everybody legitimately goes and prays. And then when they don't hear from God, they're wondering, they feel rejection. Oh, my God, he's not here and answering me. They feel this, they feel that. But that's when, again... You always have to go back to yourself and go, okay, what's going on here? Why am I not hearing God's voice? God, however you hear God. God speaks to me in many different ways. A lot of times he speaks to me in dreams. There are times where I could just be walking up the steps, going to the store, and he drops a word in me. You know, I, I love people, and I don't, I don't mean it sarcastically. I love people when they tell me, and God said, and they gives me a paragraph. I don't get that, you know. <laughs> I don't get a paragraph. I do get from God, though, but that's the way he drops it in me. So however he drops it in you is the way you hear from God. So don't think you have to get a chapter on what he's saying. He will tell you the way he wants, and he will use other people sometimes to tell you. He will say, you prayed something. This happened to me. You prayed something. And Carolyn will come up to me and go, did you know da 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 I'll be like, oh, that's what I just said. <laughs> you know? So the Lord is trying to help us. And that's, he'll do that as well. So those are the blockages that could happen to, to us as we're trying to get healed. The other thing, God cannot heal what we don't acknowledge. And people say, well, God's sovereign. He certainly is. 
He's sovereign. He's a sovereign God. But we have to acknowledge it. We give God the glory then. So if you, I don't know, if you have hatred for someone and you don't realize that so much of the hatred that's in your heart and then you, you're not saying, how could God heal you to make you aware of what's going on? So, you know, people, people will say to, have said to me, well, God could just heal me. Yes, but we have to acknowledge what is going on. We just can't say, okay, God, heal me. Sometimes it's a memory that you don't remember. It's a memory. So did it ever happen to you that you go to some family event or whatever and um, you walk in and someone says something to you and you get triggered? <laughs> and you're like, why am I acting like this? Like you're, you're like, you know, you know, what's happening? Well, because inside of you, God's trying to make you aware of something that's going on inside of you. And there is sometimes um, one of the things that we don't realize, well, I didn't realize it. I was like, wow, because this happened to me. We repent. We renounce. We, we say everything we need to say. You know, we ask for forgiveness, but do we ask to heal our wounds? I know I didn't. <laughs> I would be like, okay, God, forgive me. Okay, I repent. Okay, I renounce. Okay. So, but I didn't ask to heal my wound. And let me give you an example of that. Katie Sousa gives a testimony. And the testimony, uh, I don't know if you know her background, but she was, did uh, drugs and all that stuff. Okay, fast forward now, she's preaching around the world. She's doing everything. She's going to preach at this church. And when she gets off the plane, as soon as she gets into the city of where she's going to uh, preach, I'm sorry, as soon as she gets to the house where she's going to uh, preach, she gets violently sick. She's got a fever. She's got all this. And she said, Lord, what is this? What is this? Well, she goes in her room, and the Lord said, you didn't get healed of. She used to, uh, I, I'm not no, I don't know all this stuff, but uh, cook meth, if that's what you do, okay? She used to cook it, and you know, that's why she went to jail. And she said, Lord, I, I asked for forgiveness. I, she repented. She did all that. And he said to her, you didn't ask me to heal your wound. So now, why did he say that now? This is really cool. So she did it, and, and, and it's not a long thing that you had to wait two months and come back and talk to me. It's like, like that. He, she went before him, and she said, heal the wound of whatever it was with the meth. Okay. So now the next morning she goes to preach in the, in the church there. She says when she walks in, she smells spiritually the meth, and she's like, what is this? So she tells the lady who she, who's hosting it, and she says, I smell like meth. And she says, oh, well, this building, they used to do meth in here. So now why did that happen? Because the Lord told her when she would walk into that building, it would block her from sharing the word because that wound wasn't healed and she couldn't say what God wanted to say. And when that hit me, I was like, oh, wow. Because how many times have I done it? And I, I shared it with you the last time. Um, I was at a family affair. Now, I've been divorced for many years, and these people that were there that I know for a long time, all of a sudden, I was agitated with them, and they were annoying me, and you know, and stuff, and they come over, and they're talking to my nephew, and they're talking to my son, and they're talking, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, mm, inside of me, and it's like, you know, you're talking to them because of me. And because, you know, I'm like having this conversation in my head. You know, and you're here because of me. And da, 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 da. Okay. So I go home. I know the routine. I forgive. I repent. I renounce. I forgive. But this time it's not leaving. And I'm hysterical crying. Now I'm like, what is wrong with me? You know, I mean, this didn't just happen. So, okay, the next day I do it again, and I go before the Lord, and I'm saying, Lord, what is the matter with me? And I do it again. I repent. I forget. I refrit. I'm sorry. I forgive. I repent. I renounce. I go to the cross. I do this. You know, I don't know what else to say. So finally I called someone. I said, you got to help me through this. I said, I don't know what it is. So we sat down, and we talked, and it, the root of it was, it was a, a man issue because my father died young, and 
he was always good for us, like he showed us what to do. And now this happened to me here with a man that here I'm left with two children and I'm moving on and I felt abandoned. My father left me, now my husband leaves me, now this happens here, but I never forgave. And I didn't realize that wound was in me that I was holding. Now, why did it have to wait 45 years for this to happen? I don't know. But all I know is I'm glad it's gone <laughs> because there. But I'm telling you, it's true that when, when, when you're triggered with something, you have to go before the Lord. And we're not exempt from anything. And it doesn't matter what status you are. I don't care how long you're in the Lord. I don't care what's going on. If you haven't dealt with something, it will come back at you. It will. If you allow God to heal you. Now, I can say to myself, was I holding on to this? I, that's, that's the memory. I blotted that out of my memory, and I didn't have it there. So now when I, obviously, I was ready to get rid of it, now I'm there, I'm like, ah. Oh. So now there was another event. I said, this is the, you know, the key here to see if it really worked. <laughs> so, and I was cool. I said, okay, thank you, God. You know, <laughs> this is good. That's the way it works. I don't know why, even, even with uh, Katie Sousa, why did God have to wait? I don't know that God waited, but why did it have to wait 10 years after she's in ministry? Why couldn't it happen somewhere else? You know, so that's, those are things we're not going to know. But I'm going to tell you, they do happen. So uh, all I know is that, okay, God, this is another thing that I know how to do now that I can go. And, and it is trauma in our bones that happen. It's the trauma that stays there. And that in the past few years, they've been talking a lot about trauma now, that what it does, it's in your bones. It stays there until you release it, till you, excuse me, you acknowledge what's going on and you can get rid of it. It's amazing how all of a sudden, I don't know if you've heard, all of a sudden you're hearing trauma, 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 you know, about trauma. I never heard of trauma early on. I never did until now. I heard of trauma, but I never heard it talked about the way it is. So we cannot be made soft unless we dare to contend for the tenderness through the, our surrendering, and that surrender is our choice. If we don't choose to do it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. We have to choose to want to be healed. And it takes courage to want to get rid of your junk. It takes courage because who the heck wants to bring up all the stuff from the past? You're not bringing it up to gossip. You're not bringing it up to say, and you know, and he did, and she did. That's not why we're doing it. It's to get rid of the junk inside of you so there's no blockage in us so that we can go before the Lord and say whatever we need to say. So Sarah, here are some of the uh, hardened hearts that could happen. We pretend to be what we're not. I'm good. Oh, I'm good. That, to me, could be the performance orientation person. The performance, in, and Cindy taught on that, the performance orientation person is up there doing everything, running around, getting everything done, and, you know, I got to have this right. I got to have that right. That's all a, part of a hardened heart for whatever reason they went through. We withhold forgiveness because we distance ourselves from the mercy that greets us each day and every day. A lot of times with the unforgiveness, what we'll do is I knew somebody, well, I'm not talking to that person. I'm not talking to that person. And I said to this person, hold up your hand. How many friends do you have? And he put up two. I said, you keep that going. You're not going to have anybody. I don't talk to this one. I don't talk to that one. This is, it's comical, but it's not comical. Um, somewhere in the family, whatever, this brother and sister are not talking. And I said, why aren't they talking? Well, she said, he told me I talk too much, so I haven't talked to him in five years. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, is this a joke? No, he said I talk too much, so five years I haven't spoken to him. Oh, okay, really? You know, I mean, think about that. Like, that, that's, that's, well, this is what we do, you know? and the isolation. So I'll just be by myself. I'm good. I'm good. I'll just do whatever. No, you're not good. You're not good. We make an idol of what we can do for God. 
So it, I, I'm making this up. So if you might be in ministry and, and you just do one thing and you think you're wonderful for doing one thing, that's an idol. You can have an idol, in, at, you know, in church. You can have an idol. You, you, we got to be very, very careful with that. Um, we dethrone God as Lord and see our own appreciation for vengeance and control in his place. Now, God's vengeance is so much better than ours. I can attest to that. So early on um, through my divorce, my ex comes to me three weeks before Christmas, and he tells me he can't give me child support. Now, I needed child support to pay for my rent so I can do other things. Well, I was devastated. So I go to church that night. I don't tell anybody anything. This pastor comes up to me and goes, you know, the Lord said to tell you that vengeance is mine, say it the Lord. I went, it is? He said, yeah. I said, okay, go get him. He goes, no, that's not the way it works. I went, oh. So then what do you mean, vengeance is mine? Well, as it went on and stuff, it got cleared up, and I got double of what I should have received. So if we take it into our own hands, we don't get what God can do for us. That's why I'm saying vengeance is his. He does it a lot better than us, than what we could do. Because you want to, well, I know I did. I wanted to go over there and say whatever, and do whatever. But no, I just kept quiet, and God did turn it around for me. So, and let me say, God turned it around. It didn't happen immediately, but he turned it around for me. So the hardened heart, heart is to make, I'm sorry, heart is to make it dull and unresponsive to God, and thus to strengthen it in unbelief. So when you have a heart, instead of your heart being strong for the Lord, you're strengthening the unbelief inside of you that you won't believe that God will do anything for you. So you keep it going, you keep it going, you keep it going, and the unbelief is there. I'll just use me. Oh, he'll never get me that money. Oh, he'll never give me that money. He'll never give me that money. Well, keep saying that. He's not going to give you that money. He won't give you the, what is due you. He won't give it to you. So that's what we do with unbelief. We don't set out to not to believe. But when things happen, what do you think the enemy is going to use? Oh, your God could do this? Oh, I thought this was happening. Hebrew culture, um, heart of stone means that core of one's um, being is lifeless. So there's no life in a heart of stone. S uh, spiritual symptoms of the heart, hard heart is unable to perceive, unable to understand, unable to see, unable to hear, unable to re remember. Now, I, I showed you some of them on the chart there that says that. Okay, so, so the blockage is there. So here you are, the blockages. You can't hear God. You can't see God. You can't, you, you, you don't understand what is going on. Now in Mark 8, 17, 1, and Jesus aware of this said to them, why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened, having eyes to having eyes do you not see and having ears do you not hear and do you not remember now the disciples didn't understand what jesus was doing and i believe there was unbelief there that it was going to happen so here it is there he was saying to the disciples like don't you understand what is what is wrong with you it brings me back to a scripture the scripture um it says to know the truth the truth will set you free remember when he was saying that to the pharisees well, if you don't know the truth, it can't set you free. And, and then the revelation I got was the Pharisees are walking around and they're saying, well, we have this and we have that. That's the truth. No, they don't know the truth because they don't know the heart of God. So the heart of God, you will know truth and, you will, and God can set you free. It's the same thing here. The harden of hearts. Here we go again. So what is it in us that we're blocking to, to let God deal with us? Also, um, when we don't deal with our stuff, it can affect us physically, you know, and don't kid yourself. I'm not saying that any time you have something wrong with you, it's because you have a hard heart. But there are symptoms where how many times have we heard 
I went to the doctors and they don't know why this is happening. Why did this happen to me? How come I have this? How come I have that? They don't find anything wrong. Because yet possibly it's spiritual. Possibly that what did we have inside of us? This one, I think I shared this one time. Um, I still don't remember the name of the person. She came here many, many years ago when we were in the high school, Bernard's High School, Bernard's High School rather. And um, I took her out to dinner and she was a nurse, she was an RM, she was retired. Well, she was well respected in the hospital, so the doctors would let her come back in and pray for people. So there was this one gentleman who he was gonna have his leg amputated below the knee. And they did everything they could to, they, they could to heal the infection in the leg, but it wasn't happening. So the doctor went to her and said, okay, do whatever you want, go in and pray. So it was, it was a, a Wednesday and a Friday they were gonna do the amputation. She sat with the man two days and she went back to his childhood and said, you know, tell, you know, I call it the interview. So how is your father? How is your mother? What, you know, you, know, you have to find this stuff out because that's the only way you're going to know. And it turned out he didn't have a good childhood, you know, and all that stuff. She led him through forgiveness. He cried. He did all this stuff. It was many, many things. I'm just giving you a snippet of it. And so comes Friday morning. They go in. Doctors look at him. The infection is gone and no amputation. So imagine what we have inside of us. Again, now I'm not saying every time something happens to you, you have unforgiveness or you have, you have to ask the Lord though, what is this? Why is this happening? Is there something here? Whatever. Could be generational. Could be anything. But it doesn't mean you're in sin. Please don't walk away from here saying you're in sin either. But I do know that God has a solution for everything. I do know that. Because we serve a great big God and an itty bitty devil. But most time people make the devil bigger than what God is. And do you remember the story when Debbie Rattles died? They said it was a broken of a broken heart. The daughter died the day before and she died the day after. That's the heart issue. You know, I mean, it can affect us. It can. It's the same thing like, you know, um, plants. You talk to the plants. You keep saying, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, the plant grows. But if you're gonna be negative on everything you do and you're gonna put in the city atmosphere, guess what's gonna happen? Nothing good is gonna come from it. You just wanna walk away from the negativity that is there. Um, how do we strengthen our hearts? How do we do that? Um, if we can have an attitude of gratitude, hope, forgiveness, and love. That works. Now, in my life, through the whole, my adult life rather, through all the stuff that I've been through, every time something would come down and something would happen, I would say to the Lord, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do more for you now. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lead someone to the Lord. I'm gonna do something to aggravate the enemy because I was grateful for what God did for me because I'm being really honest with you. If I wasn't in the Lord, I truly believe I would have had a nervous breakdown with everything that had gone on. But God, two words, but God. So moving on like that, that's what we have to do. If we, I am grateful for what you're doing for me. I am grateful. I, you know, I'm, you know, show me how do I love somebody that you want to smack. How do I love someone? How do I, you know, uh, gratitude. You have to have gratitude for everything. You know, be grateful. You know, I've learned, again, through my Christianity, I, you know, I'll say, oh, that, that was really kind of you to do that. And I mean it. It was really kind, but I will acknowledge it. And you see what it, you think you're doing it for the person, you see what it does for you. It really, really moves you. Um, guarding your heart begins with a commitment to strive for a healthy heart. If we don't make a commitment to strive to get healthy, it's not going to happen. It's not a microwave thing. It's not. I wish it was, but it's not. It depends. Every individual is different. Every individual has something that, you know, we don't have. So, and the other thing is, what hurts me may not hurt you and vice versa. So you can never say, oh, that's what you're hurt about? Don't ever do that because that hurt their heart. 
So Psalms 51.10 says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So if we have the right spirit, you will be compassionate to someone and you will be able to help. You'll be able to talk to them. But constantly bringing it back for the, uh, the Lord and asking the Lord what to do. So my next picture, as we strengthen our hearts, we're going to have the muscles here. We're just going to be really cool <laughs> to get up there. And believe me, we can do it. We can. Easter spoke about the bitterness in inner vows. If we don't get bitterness out of our hearts, you're not going to have a healthy heart. You will not because the bitterness is in you. Do you ever talk to someone and you might want to say, would you eat nails for breakfast this morning? They're, they're so like, Bleh, you know, or, or one time I was at a register, I was with my son and the lady was probably having a bad day, but she was ah, nasty. <laughs> my son goes, hey, sunshine. And I looked at him, she <laughs> but she, she didn't, it wasn't fresh. He went, hey, sunshine. And she looked at him and it just like changed her whole countenance and everything. And she didn't say anything. And I was like, oh, you know, because what if we got a conversation? But she was probably having a bad, who knows what went on in her life. You don't know, you know, what went on in her life. So the next one, a person with a hard heart does not recognize the spiritual realm around him or her. A hard hearted person cannot see the way God is working in the situation, even though families and friends are telling you, look at, I see God, I see that, but they can't see it and they can't hear it because they're so hardened of what has happened. Characteristics of a hard heart is rebellion and disobedience. Do you ever have someone who, who you're telling them what to do and, you know, and, and they're like, no one's going to tell me what to do. I'm not doing that, you know, you know, all that. Well, in life, whether you like it or not, we're going to have to submit. We have to submit to someone. There's always someone over us. And it's not that they're telling what to do. Someone said something to me with a saying where she took it that it was disrespectful. And I went, that's not disrespectful. It's just the way she, she took it. Well, I think it's just re respectful. I said, well, you could think what you want, but I, I didn't take it that way. I didn't take it was disrespectful at all. She felt that the person was literally cursing at her. And the person wasn't. It was just her way of talking. I may not have talked like that, but it was her way of talking. You know, and that's what, it, you see how we're perceiving? You know, perception is not your reality. Perception can be a fact. So I'll give you an example. So I am divorced. That's a fact. My kids come and they say, you're divorced because of me. That's not true. The truth is because of what happened. The truth is divorce. But the perception of what someone believes that is not the reality. So, and that's what people don't understand. You're perceiving it wrong. You're perceiving it in a different, you know, way. You, that's why you're like, am I hearing this right? You know, whatever. So, Ezekiel eleven nineteen, And I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them, I will remove the heart of stone from the flesh and give them a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36, 26, I, I think I said this already, I will give you a new heart uh, and, and a new spirit and I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Now, how many times is God going to tell us this, that he will give us a new heart? That he will give us now he knows we have a physical heart he knows that he we're not perfect he knows that things are going to happen but i always say what are we going to do with it are we going to you know keep it in our hearts and not do anything with it are we going to just like be you know like oh well i'm not going to talk to that person anymore and that's the way i'm getting rid of it no that's not the way you get rid of it you can't get rid of it that way you have to deal with it you just have to. It's the same thing going to the doctor. Doctor says you have a cold and a fever. You need to take the antibiotic. And you're like, no. Well, is it going to go away? You know, like if you went to the doctor, like why are you going to the doctor if you're not going to take the medicine? It's the same thing here. Why are you crying out to God when you're not doing what he's telling you to do? You know, and it, it's so true because we all do that. 
It's like I even have to catch myself. Like something will go on, I'll go, ooh, what? I know what to do. I know how to pray. I know, you know, what the, but, but you get into your self-pity mode. Woe is me. You know, like what happened? And a lot of times we don't do it in, intentionally. So I want to ask you, what is the condition of your heart? Are you ready for a transplant, a heart that is whole, a heart that you, you're able to love, a heart that if someone's walking by and they didn't say hello, you don't get offended. If someone is, you know, doing whatever they're doing, if there was rejection in your life, if there was a rebellion in your life, are you getting rid of it, that your heart can be whole again and breathe and know what God wants for us? You know, it, that's really, really important to hear what God has, has wants us to do. So in my life, I, I, when I heard this scripture very early on, I, I use it all the time still. It's Psalms 139, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there is any grievous way in me. And, and lead me in a way of everlasting. How, how great is that? Some versions say, um, search me, O Lord, and find me my hurts. Some versions say, search me, O Lord, and find me my wicked ways. You know, so there's all different versions of that. But search me, O Lord, and find me. You know, it happened like you may have an argument with someone. And it may not have been your fault or whatever, but you still need to go. What's my part in this? What did I do to get into this argument? And sometimes... It's not what the, you, you did, it's what they are, and you just have to ask the Lord on how you want to deal with it, and how he wants to deal with it, and what, you know, he can do for you. So it's a hard thing with the hardened of hearts, a hardened hearts, and if you go to all the classes, like the performance orientation is a hardened heart. Bitterness and inner vows can be the hardened heart. Now there's other subjects as well, parental inversion. Parental inversion is the same thing goes back to the heart. It goes back. There's other topics. I don't remember them. But I mean, you know, with that. So there's other times. It always points back to the heart. It's the heart of what, you know, is inside of you. And this is so good. This is the DNA of the church that Pastor Peter wanted everybody to get healed. Cindy attested to that, that, you know, to have all this, you know, like I wanted to do this like root canal. You know, you go in, into these classes and you're hearing all this. The first session I ever went to it was 16 classes. I was like, oh, my God. But, you know, then they got it to where we can, you know, do whatever. And I love this because you can go back to it and go back to it and go back to it. And, you know, even with the heart issues. I speak to myself. I just told you my story. The heart issue. Okay, why am I feeling this? Why Why am I this? And, and you can go back to it. Because we're human beings. We're not Jesus Christ. Where there won't, you know, nothing will offend us. Nothing will hurt us. Nothing will happen. Things happen in our family. Things happen in life. God never promised a rose garden. Everybody in the Bible, as we read, went through something. Something happened. Something, you know, whatever. But they came out of it. You know, and, and as long as they trust God. For those who believe, God will help you. For those who believe, he, you know, he's there. I mean, he's here for everybody. But we, I look at it this way, because we believe in God, we are privileged because we have the tools to work with. We have the tools. I, you know, listen, I, I work for a corporation, and in many, many times when they would give an HR class or whatever, I'm like, they got that from the Bible. <laughs> I'm listening to the way they do things. But they're presenting it to people, you know, and stuff. So it is in the world, but they put it their own aspect on it, on with it, you know, with all that. I, were, I think I shared this with you one time. I worked for a psychologist, and he, he did mediation before you, um, for children, before you got divorced to try to get the parents back together. And he wrote this beautiful poem. I get a poem. I give it out in the healing rooms. It's called Resent Me. It says, you resent me. You take me on vacation. You take me to sleep. You take me to work. You take me to on a date. You take me wherever you are. As long as you resent me, you know, you have to forgive. So I went into him. I said, that's a beautiful poem. I said, but you know, <laughs> I said, God wrote that. It's in the, he said, he got so mad at me. He goes to me. He did not, I wrote, I said, no, no, I know you wrote the poem. 
I said, but it came from the word of God. So he asked me not to share that with his clients. <laughs> I said, but he was on the right path. He knew, he, even they knew, if you don't forgive, you can't move on. So what is it doing to your heart? So there are handouts in the back to help you go through your heart issues. And what I like about these are 15 prayers to soften the hardened heart. And each one, like Father, I turn my heart back to you. I invite you to search me and know my heart. And then they give you the scripture search, uh, Psalms 139, 24. Then the next one, Lord, even if I don't feel um, thankfulness in my heart right now, I choose to thank you. I choose to pray, uh, praise you for you are worthy all of my praise. And again, then they give you the scripture to follow it up. On the third one, the Holy Spirit, will you reveal to me any offensive way in me i repent for of whatever it is so there's not just one specific prayer that we have for this there's many and what fits you is what i like about this here because then it says pray for a tender heart that is unafraid to love lord will you make me tender hearted and afraid to love Father, I receive your love. I ask, Father, that I can experience your love in such a way that my heart will be able to fully love the way you have called me to love. Now, it doesn't mean you take all these prayers verbatim and you have to say each and every word. You put in the words that you need for you. You put in the words, and the scriptures will back you, uh, back you up. Like in Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgive uh, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And you go on. Then the next one, pray for God's love to mend what needs mending. The next one, trust God with your heart so you can be whole and healed. A lot of us don't trust God because of what's happened in our past, especially if you didn't have a good relationship with your earthly father, you're having a trouble, you know, trusting God this way. So, these are prayers here again that will help you go through it and put your name and go slow. Then it says, never let the fire in your heart go out so that you want the fire of God in you. And I can say for myself, that's what I do. I don't want the fire to go out. I don't want, I want it be like the day I got saved. I got so excited. I was so in fire for God. I want to learn more. I want to learn more. Don't ever think that you get to a place that you have arrived because then you're in trouble, because <laughs> we never arrive. You always have to be in a position of wanting to learn, wanting to move forward, because look what's happened to us. We have moved to new levels in the Lord. And as we move to new levels, there's new things in us. Now, I don't, I don't mean that every time we move to a new level, I'm saying that you're sinning or you have something, but you wanna get closer to God. You want that pure heart that God wants for us. If he says it in his word, it's in there for us to do it. It's there for us to move on. So I challenge each and every one of you to go slowly with these prayers in your time. Don't say it verbatim. Do put him the way you feel, but this, this is just a guide for you. And then later on um, next week or whenever, if you need someone to help you, because sometimes that happens, just to bring you through something, let us know. We'll pray with you. But you have to ask the Lord, what is in your heart first? Is there the rejection? Is there abandonment? Is there, uh, you know, rebellion? What is in your heart that is preventing you from moving on? That's what you need to know. And once you find that out, you're going to soar. You're going to really soar. You're going to move forward in God, and you're going to be able to go. I like, I call them the aha moments. Like, ah, oh, I didn't realize that, you know? So... I, I know this has happened to me when I read scripture, I study scripture, I, I learn the scripture, and then all of a sudden I go back to that scripture and all of a sudden go, I didn't see that. Oh, I got another word. Oh, I got another, well, that's, that's the aha moments we're gonna get. So I just wanna challenge each and every one of you, read the, read the prayers, see if there's anything within you to move forward, and I bless each and every one of you, amen.